Now we are in the one of the most sacred places in the world. The place that the enemy is looking for so much. You have the unique opportunity to see the decision-making center. Let's go inside. Listen, your task is to provide ammunition, to engage the drones for performing the tasks. Yes, sir. Any questions? That's all. Continue working everywhere. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, General, sir. Thank you very much. I haven't even hoped that I would be able to hear someday in my life in the place that the Russians are looking for and trying to destroy. Of course, such attempts have already been made. You constantly change places, right? Yes, of course. Can you tell me how it all happens? These monitors display the situation from drones and video surveillance cameras. This is my workplace. I can see the operational situation that is happening. All operational tactical group commanders and brigade commanders are in direct contact with me. With one button of the Minister of Defense, the Commander-in-Chief. Of course, I have constantly been in contact with them. An ordinary mob turns into a combat action zone. This shows the current situation. I understand that this is a secret. That's why we don't show it. How is the situation right now? Well, the situation is controlled by complicated. The enemy is constantly attacking our units. Wave by wave, they advance somewhere for 100, somewhere for 200 meters. Is it true that they kill their own soldiers in the first line if they try to retreat? Yes, of course. This is what we call walking or corpses. It's really so. That's it. We have run out of time. Let's give our officers a chance to work. Thank you all very much. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to heroes. Will it be possible to ask you to answer a few more questions somewhere? Yes, please. Not here, in some other place. May I have a look at what the commander is reading? Yes, please. The Night of Freedom by Jokhar Dudayev. He seems to have said that one should not insult Ukrainians. Because if you insult Ukrainians, that's the end. You cannot take away from them what belongs to them. Dictionary of Russian military slang. Sometimes you have to understand what they're writing about. Because, as a rule, they use special slang or jargon. That is, they encrypt so that we don't understand, right? Of course they do. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Nice to meet you. You are that person who saves Ukraine during missile attacks. Mikhail Oleshchuk, the commander of the Air Force of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. Dear Mikhail, I noticed something. I wonder what's there. Launcher of the Iris T anti aircraft missile complex. So, we can we see it? Do you want to see it? Of course we do. Okay, let's go. All Ukrainians want to. We heard of it, but no one has seen it. Friends, this is a unique opportunity. Iris T, that very one that saves us. Wow. Fire and range is 40 kilometers. You know, all 51 missiles that were fired by this anti aircraft missile complex, all of them hit the target. All of them? Yes. Division commander put the launcher to the stowed position. Dimitro, let's go. It has worked, it has fired, it has fired, it has left. This is probably the first time in the history, yes, that a commander of the Ukrainian Air Force acts as a driver. What do you think, dear Mikolo? Well, we get enough complexes to talk about a closed sky. In order to protect our entire country, we need more than 100 anti-aircraft missile systems. I think this is the task of more than one year. Now, you're testing Iris T and Norwegian Nesms. And on February 24th, when everything started, we had a different situation with these complexes, right? 
Yes, it was a very difficult situation. We had C-300 complex in service, Buk, M-1, air defense missile system. There was nothing at all. How did you manage to say it was difficult? It's probably to say nothing. This is the crater. This was the entrance. There were the gates and the sheds. Right here. There was the huge mulberry. What's left of it? Nothing. At first, they managed to enter the airspace of Ukraine easily. As a rule, they do raids. The Crimean group works at the direction of Kherson, Mykolaiv, Odessa. They enter either from the sea or through the Mykolaiv region, through the Kherson region, Rostov. As a rule, the Rostov group irons Mariupol. This is also clearly seen there, right here. Well, this is where they will feel more comfortable. And here is a Kursk, Voronezh, Belgrade group. They enter from this border, go down, fulfill a missile bomb attack and return. They perform tasks in pairs of three or four. That is, there can be up to 10 aircraft in the year. Despite the fact that there are quite a lot of them, let's say red ones, our aviation is in the air. They know about our aviation and do not come close. That is, they flew up and as soon as they see our aircraft, they immediately turn around and leave. Russians wanted to come in here, but they did not succeed, so they surrounded the city and bombed it. As a commander of the Air Force of Ukraine, it was quite painful for me to watch all this. I actually saw how the aircrafts came and just carpet bombed the city. Believe me, this is probably the most painful matter for me. Here the scale of destruction caused by an air bomb. Russian plane flies in, goes down, drops two bombs, then it makes a circle and drops two more bombs. It dropped 12 bombs in three days. What can be said about the morale of the Russian pilots who see exactly where they threw a bomb, where they launch a missile, they see everything? How can a serviceman who is on the side of the enemy fight against our children, grandchildren, the civilian population, destroy our civilian infrastructure? This is military cowardice. And here in the courtyard on the outskirts of Cherniv, we see the remains of an aircraft that killed civilians. This is the aircraft canopy that protects the pilot in the cockpit. And here are the remains of a Russian aircraft. As you can see, everything was burning here for sure. There is one bone over there. What do you mean a bone? Well, a burnt one. Everything burned down. There is no tail there. And the tail burned down, only the front part left. Their tactics are absolutely understandable. It does not differ from the tactics of World War II. Hitler's tactics when he bombed Europe, bombed the capitals, Remember, when he bombed London, it can't be so. They do not shoot at our soldiers, they just shoot at the civilians. This is Russian world, the Russian world as it is. It was the same thing that they bombed in order to create chaos and panic. They completely destroyed everything to make it easier to enter the city, so that there was almost no resistance. They are coming to destroy our home, to kill our women, kill our children, make this land never fertile. This is the tactic they use. 15,000 casualties in Afghanistan, in fact, brought the Soviet Union to its knees. Now the number of losses of the Russian Federation is much, much higher, and it does not stop them. 
And there is only one conclusion, that probably the cheapest thing in this country is a human life. We have different tactics and a different strategy. We do not have such opportunities. It makes no sense for us to spend a lot of ammunition to destroy our own infrastructure. We count every shell, every mine and every human life. I was closing the gate when I turned and saw the plane which was flying at me. No sound. And two thermal traps, its protection. And then I saw that it had turned back and it was becoming bigger fast. And I realized that it was falling down and I just fell under the fence. Rumbling noise, fragments everywhere. I raised my head and saw fire everywhere. Everything was on fire. Where is Misha? I say, I don't know where Misha is. He went into the corridor here and was laying here, on the edge. Well, he burned down. That's what was left from him. He burned down because the turbines, the front landing gear, knocked out the whole wall. Knocked out. Everything was smashed. Women were standing there in a line saying they thought it was like a movie. Two parachutes going down. One was shot by the territorial defense in the air, and the second one, he landed on the chicken coop by managed to shoot one person. That man came out with a pitchfork, they say, or with a show wheel, or something else. He was beating the pilot, and that he was surrounded. Now the situation has changed. We really received a good number of air defense systems, the modern ones. Please put the launcher in a combat position. Is this a control panel? Yes, this is a control panel. Next, the car will be placed on the jacks. The rockets will be put into a vertical position. This is how the antennas come out. Yes, the antennas, correct. This is a real hunt for these complexes in Russia. Absolutely. And the fact that we are shooting now and we see some bushes over there, some destroyed things. Won't that be a landmark? No, there are no. Unfortunately, many such locations in Ukraine. We are right next to the launcher. The radar is located in another place, so that the anti-aircraft missile system is dispersed. And if the enemy's missile hits the anti-aircraft missile complex, only one launcher will be destroyed. The rest of the launcher, namely the radar and the combat control cabin, will continue to perform their tasks. We received modern air defense systems. Not all of them have worked yet, but in any case, admit that Iris T and Nazans are those systems that I hit 10 out of 10 shots. Right? And how many irises do we have? I won't tell you how many launchers we have, but these are more than a dozen complexes. Is it now and will be more? We are preparing personnel who will go to Germany for Iris State training in the nearest future. And we are expecting more anti-aircraft missile complexes to be put into service in the near future this month. And finally, Patriot. Ukraine simply would not be able to get this complex because we are not a NATO member country. It is a fact that we have modern air defense systems. Is this enough? No. Will there be more? Yes. We work under that every day. I saw a cat in your waiting room. This is a local big cat, not just a cat. What is your pet's name? Yunter. Yunter. They say you found it somewhere around here, right? He was born here and he lives here somewhere on the territory. He just walks around the area. And this is a cat who knows more state secrets, I think so, than anyone in this country, I think so. A strategic cat, a combat cat, let's say. Yes, he survived the missile attack. Everything is fine with him, as you can see. Have missiles hit the place? The main directorate of the intelligence. One missile hit this place. You are really being hunted. Well, so what? I really like it. Why? First of all, this is, let's say, a measure of recognition. It shows that I'm doing my job well. I look at you, I really see, as they say for a reason, an Iron Man who is not afraid of anything. I believe in God. I'm afraid of God's punishment. Maybe it sounds funny, but to be afraid of some Russia is ridiculous. How many times have you been in church this year? Can you remember? Well, probably five times. I usually come to the church when it feels really hard.
The sinking of the cruiser Moskva was the biggest loss of the Russian fleet since 1941. Now I will introduce you to the person who led this operation, Vice Admiral Oleksiy Neyizhbato. Thank you for taking time to meet. Good afternoon. Snake Island, cruiser Moskva and many other things. This was done by all defense forces. As military personnel, we were interested in the reduction and in the future the complete deprivation of the Black Sea fleet of the Russian Federation from any activity in the Black Sea. For this, we had some opportunities and the chance to use these opportunities was rather small. Welcome aboard. This is an island-class patrol boat. They were transferred by the United States Coast Guard. Specifically, this boat was transferred almost before the start of hostilities in 2021. It has been fighting since the first days of the war. This boat shut down one caliber missile. Really? Yes, this is a usual combat unit. Let's talk here. Yes, of course, please. Thank you very much. So I came in and saw this already legendary picture, a stamp. Can you tell me how it had happened? Have you even expected at the beginning of the full-scale invasion that we would be able to sink the cruiser Moscow? The task of this cruiser and the very idea for that purpose it was built is the fight against the aircraft carriers of the United States. This ship is designed to conduct combat operations in the ocean. Indeed, it had nothing to do in the Black Sea. With such forces and means of air defense, which were in this cruiser, we would need at least six or seven cruiser missiles. They were convinced that a distance in which it was located was beyond our reach, and it turned out that it was achievable. Our forces discovered this group of ships, including the cruiser of Moscow. Well, the Neptune missile complex hit with two missiles. Two missiles are not enough to sink such a ship, but it is at the bottom of the sea now. The cruiser Moskva is like these huge columns that were moving towards the Kiev region. They weren't able to imagine that the second army of the world could be harmed or destroyed by anyone. So these columns, which were burned down, were dragged alone with a drosty foot directly into the defeat zone. The Ukrainians are such people that they have not missed this chance. How did the Russians allow this? Due to their self-confidence. You understand, right? It was said that the Ukrainian Navy and Air Force no longer exist. If we don't exist, then who is there to be afraid of? To lose a flagship, a cruiser, at war with a fleet that doesn't exist. What does it mean for this war? Well, this is such a big image loss. The phrase Moskva, Moscow, is in the bottom, received a practical answer. This gave us the opportunity to deoccupy Snake Island, and we started this grain deal, a grain mission to provide Africa and Asia with food. After the sinking of the cruiser Moskva, they began to justify their aggression with revenge. I remember Severodonetsk before it became temporarily occupied. We came only for a day. The city was half surrounded. Only one bridge remained. Just look, this is where you can see it better. Siemera Donetsk here, every apartment building is hit. All houses are hit, all houses are hit. We turn around, Kurchatov Street, further all the houses are hit. And here, shop windows are blown. Everything is destroyed in the yard, so all houses are destroyed. There are shell fragments everywhere, Dmitro, everywhere. Here they are. It's impossible to go by car, they are too sharp. The broken window frames are on the ground. They are just destroying the city. Yes, they hit everywhere and everything. Let's leave, it's dangerous here. The enemy is located not far, they can spot us. How far is the enemy from here? Behind the green bushes, and that's it. Everybody got down. There was a whistling. Everybody got into the cars. Get into the cars. It was just some kind of nightmare. You always had to get down. Always had to get down. 
In their propaganda, they use the message protection of the Russian-speaking population, liberation of the Russian-speaking population. But unfortunately, the Russian-speaking are those who suffer the most here. It's the region where the Russian-speaking population lives. There are lots of Russian-speaking Ukrainians. What does their liberation mean? Nothing, just lies and that's it. Therefore, they do not care whether to destroy the Russian-speaking people in the Donbas or not to destroy them. They're heading to their goal, and the goal is to occupy entire Ukraine. Hello. Hello. How are you? Glory to Ukraine. Glory to heroes. All people want this shooting to end. We can say that their information operation failed. Hitler-style bombing. When London was bombed, he thought that they would run away, but in fact, he united the nation. You have been traveling to so many places. We knew you. No. World inside out. And so that all people know what is happening here, that it hurts us. We are worried about everyone. What I see is that you already do not react to explosions at all. Got used to them. That is, they're here and you do not even flinch. Your hands are shaking, right? Yes, they are. We are bombed in that house, then moved here. Now they have started to take up this block. What do you think? Is there a place for the civilians during active hostilities in the cities? Or is it better to ask them to evacuate temporarily? You know, such work was carried out and is being carried now. What are the difficulties? The fact that some people refuse and those who remained, they refuse to evacuate. I don't know what they are counting on, but I consider it's a tragedy for them. And for us too. Let's go. It will start now. Good luck to you. Please hide in the basement. We will close the entrance door now and go down. Take care and be careful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Take care of yourselves. There might be hits now, please. Into the car. Yes, into the car. Let's go. Let's run. Let's go away. Now. I didn't take anything. Here, this is everything I had when we ran out of the basement. These are all my belongings that I had time to grab. They said faster, faster, quickly. In five minutes, I threw out the potatoes from here, put the dog in and jumped out. That's it. My brother was hit in his forehead. What is your dog's name? They asked. He said, Adolf. Adolf? Are you a Nazi? They asked. What happened next? They were beating him. They were beating me, squeezing out my eyes, torturing me. And then they let me go. Is that all for the dog's name? Well, yes. Tell me, please. For the dog, for Adi. For the dog, for serving in the army. For being a Ukrainian. What about the humanitarian corridors now? Humanitarian corridors? They practically don't work now. We made these corridors. Then they refused us and blocked them. Then they started selling places in these corridors. Then they started selling people. That was a slavery itself. I mean, they were buying, collecting money. They were buying the opportunity. They paid money for the bus to leave. This is a slavery. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. What's your name? Petrovich. Petrovich. Are you here for a long time? I lived at home for a long. At home? Here in Severodonetsk? It's far in Severodonetsk. We need to get out of here while it's scary. They are bombing. Are you scared? How old are you? I'm five. Where are your parents? Mom is missing. Soldiers took her away. And your dad? My dad... He left to the western Ukraine. I've been remembering this boy's voice for almost a year now. 
And I just can't watch this video without tears. This is probably the worst thing of the war. This is the worst that can happen. Children who are suffering is... It doesn't fit into any theory of anything. Hi. This is his brother, Johnson. Hello, Johnson. Jason. Oh, Jason. Well, we lived at home. Mom went to the city a week ago and never came back. Yesterday, soldiers came and took us to a safe place. His father is in the central Ukraine, in Poltava. Mm -hmm. And yours. And my father stayed in Rubish. Will you take us to my dad? They will. The guys here are so cool that they will. They will take you to your dad. Such volunteers as he. My dad's work was all bombed. And the missile exploded very close when we were sleeping with my brother. I was in the kitchen and my brother was on the sofa. There is no house anymore, just a tiny piece of it. No one lives there. Has anyone seen your mom for the last time? Well, a week ago. Have you already shot those bad guys? Bad guys? Our guys shoot bad guys. Soon we will defeat them. There will be no bad guys, only ours will remain. It started in 2014. I just asked my mom, would everything end tomorrow? And she said yes. Tomorrow you will go to your dad. Tomorrow you'll go. Everything will be okay. Take care of yourselves. When the volunteers sent us the photo that this boy Petrovich got to his father, I had such feelings that I wanted to cry. Have you personally cried during this war? And when do you feel like crying? Being the commander-in-chief, I do not want to reveal any of my weaknesses, but I will repeat, I'm a human being. I actually have cried once when a mother was looking for her son. And he was a helicopter pilot and flew to Mariupol. Even at that moment, while I was corresponding with her, I had hope that he was still alive. And at some point I was told her, unfortunately he died, he was gone. And I had to somehow clarify the situation with his mother, because his mother sent me his text before the flight. He texted her, saying that he was a patriot, that even if he dies, he want to be known as a normal person. And when I tried to somehow discuss this issue with his mother, I didn't have enough strength. Children were missing childhood. For two months, I think they were missing it greatly. That's why our team decided that it was necessary to give children everything they deserved, at least something the best we can. <laughs> Attention, please. Since we're celebrating today, we have news for you. We have a new policeman. Hi. Hi, Karkiv. Many children write me letters. We're trying to surprise some children to help them somehow. But believe me, it is simply impossible to read these letters. And which children's letters do you remember most? Probably those letters that were addressed to St. Nicholas. <laughs> but they came to me in a wonderful way. And how pleased I was to be St. Nicholas for this small number of children. It is simply impossible. Right next to this desk, a boy I think his name was Ilya. He was probably four years old. He took me by my hand and said, I want to talk to you in private. 
He's four or five years old. He says, bend down, I'll whisper to you. We'll be definitely return to marry you, Paul. I say, yes. He says, and when? I say, this year. So children ask for this. Yes, it's inspired to tears, yeah. A saltive car in Kharkiv was completely destroyed, but people lived there. People have grouped, they cooperated, they helped each other. It's kind of uncomfortable to be in body armor next to you. Roman Romanovich, one more cup of tea, please. To pour some more? Just a second. Be careful. Thank you. Where do you go to get water now? There's a rural source near the church. Don't you have a generator here? Of course we don't. Territorial defense charges our phones and radios. We often ask them to do that. Thank you. During all this year, we can see that even in the most terrible times, people make small celebrations for themselves. We saw how in small saltive yards, people make tea clubs and chat. We saw weddings during the war. Do you, Constantine, by your own free will and not under pressure, want to take Galina, whom you see in front of you as your wife? I do. It is scary to even talk about this, that we are learning to live in times of war, but nevertheless, our people showed by this war time example that you can learn anything and you can get used to anything. Now join your hands. On the 15th of March, we had an extremely difficult six hours battle. There were a little over 20 of us, and there were tank and 300 Kadyrov vets. And we were holding this line. Our artillery did everything to smash them down. And then I realized that when the tank came, I've already said goodbye to her. But there was no way to make a phone call because of only 1% charge on the phone. And after that, a day later, I get on my knee, here is the wedding ring, and I say, do me the honor, marry me. I want to grow old next to you for the rest of my life. I want to be with you all my life. And she said, yes. She took this ring. And here we are together. And now I'm so proud of it. And I don't want to take off my wedding ring even now. This is a grenade ring. I made it smaller with the pliers. We live in such a historic time now. Everything is getting very intense. Everything becomes different than it was before. Perhaps sometimes we need to live so much in a few days what people live in a decade. We need to fit all our happiness in every single day. Many things, many things in life are superfluous. You pay attention to the wrong things. You should pay more attention to those who love you. Be very careful with time. And every time I live and my wife realized this, we just don't talk about it. For me, it's a one-way ticket. And she knows that I may not return and I know that she's waiting for me. And this is an incredible motivation. I fight for my homeland, for my Ukraine, for my family, my once unloved Kharkiv. But now it is the most precious and coolest city on earth. Whose photos are there on your desktop, if this is okay to ask? My son and my daughter. But I always wait for my wife's call. We fight for our families, 100%. I fight for my family, for my home, for my land, and what is typical for my country, which is called Ukraine, that must live, and for the future of my children. Therefore, in fact, everything we do now, we do for them. Before the war, I was a carpenter. I made furniture for people in these apartment buildings, in every second one.
this neighborhood is all like that. Here we take four last streets of the district and it all continues in the same way further and further and further into the city, where it seemed that it would be safe and it all goes further. Explosions, fires, disasters, pain, it goes on and on. Okay. Let's walk now. This is the most painful thing. If these people are still alive, when you find photo albums and you don't know if these people are still alive, people just lived. Poseidon Cafe. People had holidays. What a nightmare. Children's shoes. Therefore, simply using a large amount of ammunition, they take the area and just destroy it. Absolutely, despite the fact that all the infrastructure that is there will be destroyed. I don't know, but even now I have a thought where to put this album. I want to keep it and hand it over, you know. I don't know whom to hand it to. Let's leave it where it was. A drone! A drone! A drone, let's go! Did you see it? Oh, we heard it. Here we go. It has started. The task was, first of all, to get the enemy away from Kharkiv, so that Kharkiv outskirts were not shelled, so that it couldn't be reached by Russian artillery, yes. The line along which our units are located is a ring road. The nearest enemy's positions are 250 to 300 meters from us. Follow me and immediately fall into the trenches. The enemy is right in front of us. Ruska Lozova is there at 12, 7 kilometers. What do they get us with? With grad systems, mines, artillery, and the tank shoots, direct fire. Grads started. Rockets, get down. Rockets, grads are shooting. Rockets. It's over. Don't want to seem like everything is fine. This is a normal thing. Multiple rocket launcher won't probably shoot anymore. They change their position after the volley, so that we don't shoot back. Yes. So we were slowly moving in that direction. We moved in that direction, the fight is going in that direction. We were trying to destroy the enemy and we continue working. We worked so that we could move forward. In our thoughts, we're already here and here and here. That is, in our thoughts, we have already reached the border and destroyed the enemy. They had been holding these positions here from February 26 to March 26, when we finally knocked them out. You know, I will say glory to the heroes, and heroes don't die, then go to heaven and regroup. There are no options. At the end of March, at the beginning of May, the first offensive operations took place near Kharkiv. We captured the high ground, which gave us the opportunity to control the approaches to Kharkiv, to Ruska Lozovo, to Darachi, to Tsarkini, and to other settlements. There is black smoke ahead. This is better clear. So there is ongoing urban fighting now, right? Russian troops were located here yesterday. We can say that we are the first civilians who got here. A Ukrainian tank is ahead, moving towards Belaklia. This is the historical footage of a very important counter-offensive operation, which will be studied in the history books for hundreds of years. We hang this on it. The grenade is fixed. Now you and I will go and through it all in the armored personal carrier.
What's your name? Boris. Boris. Call sign? Razor. What was your job before the full-scale invasion? I'm an IT engineer. But from 2014 to 2017, I served in the police. Is it difficult to aim? Yes, it is. In addition, EW works so the drone cannot normally stabilize itself. Drop it, yes. Outcome. I missed it. Missed a bit. Yes, just at the last moment. It was blown away and there. It happens, right? Yeah, it got burnt. I'm sure it won't go again, but... So, now I'll gain altitude. You will do it again, right? Yes, sure. I remember the atmosphere in Verbivka with your guys from aerial reconnaissance. This is something incredible. They work very professionally, very clearly and coherently. You know, as they say in the Russian use, demoralization. No, on the contrary, high spirit, humor. <laughs> He's taken it away. What's going on here now? An old man is looting. An old man is looting. A local resident. It's a Russian APC. We knocked it out. A local resident of Belaklia. Yes, we knocked out. It stopped. And what does he take out? Grenade launcher? No, there's a shovel here. Really? So he collected it all and went home. <laughs> <laughs> They're trained already. It's been a while. The guys already know how to work. And this motivation is the most important thing. Our most important pilot who taught us to fly yesterday morning, the tank fired at us. It didn't hit us, it hit Dava. Tore up his new pants and his new leg. And the old one? Well, all black now. The old holy one. How many stitches did they put in? I didn't count. Well, in one word, such a hole. But not deep, thank God. So the legend we heard was about you having escaped from the hospital. I just left. Left? They wanted to hospitalize you. They did their job. I said, thank you very much. You said no and left. There are those who... There are also bullet wounds. Aerial reconnaissance. He was covering together with the patrol police. Such a big guy. We got two bullet wounds in the shoulder. Within a month, he was already in the formation. This is the county of the invincible people. That's right. Bahram, dancer should contact me. Bad bugs are running. Bad bugs are running means that Russian soldiers are running from place to place. Now let's see where they run into. If this, um, they have separated. Some of them entered this apartment building. Two apartments? Yes. Well, of course, we won't shoot at the apartment building. If we are lucky now and they run into some garage or shed to grab their things, we hit them with artillery. We will catch them there. We have worked with aerial reconnaissance and have also seen on a drone screen Russian soldiers in Balakli. Mortar! And the next day, not only Balakli, it started. Glory to the heroes! and it was difficult to comprehend. It seemed that you would return from the combat zone, turn on your mobile phone and see that we are already somewhere in Luhansk. Just when the Kharkiv offensive operation began, I was on my way to the next Rammstein and it developed so when we get to Rammstein, I go to the meeting first. The bilateral meeting always starts with Lloyd Austin, Mark Mealy and our delegation. And they asked as well, what's going on there? In reality, everything was being prepared. This operation was offered by General Sirsky. He offered it in the Supreme Commander General Headquarters. Mr. Sirsky managed to create such conditions under that the enemy did not fully understand what the real plans were. That was a key aspect of achieving our victory there.
We were planning the operation in the south while there was the task of creating some kind of distraction at our own discretion. But when some events started to happen in the south, the enemy transferred part of their forces, that means just to the south. And we thought, why not to plan an offensive operation in this direction? I really liked this idea. It was just brilliant to talk and to talk about Kherson, but to go to Kharkiv region. Yes, we cannot act as the enemy expects us to do. We don't have such capacities. We are not ten times more than the Russian army, and therefore we cannot act predictable. They were withdrawing, and the day before yesterday, at 10 o'clock at night, they completely ran off from Belaklia. How they were running off? We were sitting all around 10 o'clock in the morning. We heard, let's take our things and get the hell out of here. Hi, my dear friend. We were together, as you remember, in Urpen, Bucha and Stommel. Hello. Hello. And now we're already in the Kharkiv region. The Russians were running. They were leaving their weapons. They were just running off. They run a little, but not too far. We're moving on. We are tired of retreating. Everyone had this impulse, an attempt to break, somehow to subvert the course of this war. Putin wanna win us badly, but we're gonna break his legs. We crossed them, and we're crushing them, and we will keep doing it. Good luck. Everything will be Ukraine, yes. The results were very impressive. On the first day, we moved 18 kilometers on the first day of the offensive operation near Belaklia. Did you expect such a pace, or it was a surprise? I'm no longer surprised by our defense forces. I'm just happy about it every time. Every time I just think that they're great, but I no longer have such an emotion as surprise. Surprise has become the normal thing, exactly. What is the task now? We need to pick up captured military vehicles here. The main focus was on a rapid advancement. Special units were provided to occupy the territory. One of our combat units, the Kraken, was at the forefront of those events. Take down this trash. Their backbone was from people who are called hooligans. Then all this was built up on their base, but everyone sees the result. In fact, one of the most combat-ready units is now in Ukraine. Everyone knows that. We have already entered the gray zone, where there are neither ours nor theirs. This is a little bit behind Kupiansk. They brought us quite a lot of rounds. Cornets. Cornets, thanks to them. We fight them with their own weapons, Dmitro. Yes, and they will even repair it for us. And where is that? Up there. Get in, try to start it. No batteries. Here, an enemy tank 800 meters away from us. Now the group went to ambush. And we'll try to blow it up. Get into the cars. Get into the cars. Since the 4th, it's been complete trash in here. From the 4th, we are moving ahead here in 12 days. We are constantly assaulting. A large amount of military vehicles was just left. 
we captured military vehicles for two mechanized battalions and one tank battalion. We work, so to say, from the wheels. Well, what are the forecasts now? We're reinforcing now. They're reinforcing us in brigades. You see, brigade commander. And we will continue to move on like this. What next? Everything on the way to Luhansk and then to the state border. And then, and then, as God wills. <laughs> Without these victories, I will tell you frankly, help from our partners cannot be expected, because this help always goes hand in hand with our victories. Therefore, in this period, victory was really important for us. We are in Kherson. This is for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wave the flag. We have been looking for you so much. We have been waiting for you so much. Thank you very much for coming. Kherson is Ukraine. I was often asked by our partners, what about Kherson? It's such a big city and urban fighting. And will there be risks or will you bomb it? No, we won't. We know how to conduct urban battles delicately, but with the aim of preserving population's lives brain of the armed force of Ukraine. How are decisions distributed? Strategic planning at the general staff is done according to NATO standards. We can see for working out the strategic plan is chosen. It had a positive result during the planning of Kharkiv and Kherson operations. Three scenarios for the use of the armed forces are being developed. All three scenarios are being played. Then one of the most appropriate scenarios for working out the strategic plan is chosen. It is then approved by the President of Ukraine, the Supreme Commander-in-Chief. Glory to Ukraine! Glory to heroes! They did not spare paper and paint in the printer advertising the referendum Russia forever and ever. They seem to have been sticking these posters for 255 days. I came to Kherson. In these posters, the feeling was unpleasant. There was a feeling of an upside-down world. For several months, this happened in the Kherson region. I came here and the city has been already transformed because of things like this. And these are little things, they affect the atmosphere. And then I think, what is there in Donetsk? Do you understand what a challenge this is? It is clear that the enemy launched its propaganda machine in the temporarily occupied territories, including the Kherson region. And perhaps they managed to infect the heads of some of our citizens with this virus. However, the territory is deoccupied now, and we can see how happy the Ukrainians are. Here are our guys. It can be seen that there's the ladder. They're taking off these posters. Let's go and have a look. Glory to Ukraine! Glory to Ukraine. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Hello, guys. We've been waiting for a long time. For a long time, Russia is here forever. That is your personal initiator, right? Of course, we're removing them out of here. And no matter if they say that Kherson is pro-Russian, it's all lies, because Kherson is Ukraine. They won't be able to legitimize the rag, the tricolor flag, on our territory neither the jury nor the factor. During the year of the war and during 10 years of traveling nowhere else did I feel such a high festive spirit as in Kherson in the first days after liberation. Nine months! Glory to you, Ukraine! My dears, thank you. 
can we hug you? Glory to Ukraine! Glory to heroes! Glory to Ukrainian army! Sorry, it happened that we temporarily withdrew, but every day we challenged the soldiers to go forward. Thank you for your forbearance, for what you have endured, for what you have done here directly, because without you, we'd probably be here for a long while. The main thing for you is to stay alive. Glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes! Thank you, thank you, thank you! Kherson is Ukraine. Kherson is Ukraine. Kherson is Ukraine. When I watch the video, when I see the faces of people who, despite everything, meet and kiss our soldiers in liberated Kherson and interviews with those people, I immediately want to cry. It's so, you know, emotional. I became very sentimental. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you! You look around and you can't imagine, is this really happening to you? And I'm proud of every Kherson citizen who simply has waited for this. Kherson is incredible. We've all been watching you and what happened in this square. When you went out against the tanks without weapons. That's where it all happened. Go home! Go home! Kherson is Ukraine! We were carrying flags, we were shouting. Kherson is Ukraine. Kherson is Ukraine. I went to the last point until they started guessing. And they scattered us. They threw the smoke bombs. They tear gassed us. There was burning sensation here. Tears flowed. That's how it was. It was very scary. Very scary. But we are happy. We're all happy, aren't we? They ran away and began to bomb Kherson, which according to their legislation is Russia. What is this? This is their practice to destroy cities. People would run, there would be no stability, and life would not return to the cities. That bank, those houses, these scums are still there. It is better to get away from here and not to stay here for long, as you understand the specific of a sniper's work in its time. If you are standing here for a long time, you never know how it might end. There, if you want, I can... From the window here, we can have a good look at the Antonovsky Bridge. Ordinary houses, ordinary cottages on the first line, and that's where the Russians are now. You need to understand that if you're standing, a sniper can see you through a scope. It's tough. I had to give Carvalho to my child at the age of six because she was just sitting and crying. At the beginning of July, when using HIMARS, our army began to knock out their storehouses and their staging area. It turned out that they had a lot of corpses at once. Yes, well, I will call things as they are. And one day on Saturday evening, we smelled. It's July, it's hot. We opened the windows for the evening and smelled a terrible stench. First the smell of burnt rubber, tires, and then the smell of burnt bodies. When the next day we met with our friends in the church, it turned out that this smell was all over the city. It just was there like a fog. Oh my god. Very close and very loud. Well, I saw a smoke right there. Don't stand near the window. Let's go to the other side. The shelling is on. Tima, quickly, here you go. Run, run. Behind the house. Run, behind the house. Behind the house. Are there hits, Sasha? Follow us. It's something strange. Here, let's go here. Here, it will be safer. 
honey is done. It's safe in here. There's nothing to be scared of here. It's okay, honey. Everything is fine. Mama already thought it would hit us now. No, honey, everything is fine. I just want to say that those people who were closer to all of this, they said that this was how they put the tires and then they put the bodies on top. Then the tires again and then they poured it all with gasoline. People saw it from their apartment buildings. Did they burn the corpses of their soldiers? They burned the corpses of their soldiers. And you see this whole lie saying, we don't abandon our soldiers. And I realized that if they did this with the bodies of their soldiers, they would never win this war. I'm lying here and thinking, God, this is 21st century and they are burning bodies. It's just creepy. Terrible things. Oh, these are horrible things. I can't explain it to myself. But all this time we hoped, all this time we read the Bible, prayed and we asked God for protection. A small personal Bible. Yes, we were waiting for our soldiers. Let us be Russian-speaking, but for us Ukraine is our country. And we want Ukraine to be here. And Kherson is Ukraine for us. It was possible to get. Well, well... It's just... It's quite close already. It flew already. It's already out there somewhere. Don't you want to leave this place? Oh, well, now we are taking Sasha. Come on, take Sasha. We need to leave this place. Now, they will smash everything here. Yes, they are. You can already see how many times they shoot in here. Honey, now. We must go. Stay here. Now your mom takes your dad and we are gonna leave this place. We are carrying over all things here because we're gonna leave here. And the soldiers say that it's still dangerous to move in here. Dangerous? Do you hear? It's dangerous. But it's okay. Soon we will kick these enemies away. Yeah. And you will return home. Everything will be okay. Yes. It flew over. It flew over. Sit down. It didn't explode. And our soldiers are here. Near... Here they are located nearby. Our soldiers? Yes, well, yeah. Where the Russian soldiers were located, there are our soldiers now. I see you know everything. Yes, we do, yes. We went there. We saw it. We brought them a jar of jam there. Good afternoon. We are waiting here. The mom is taking things into the car. We want to take the kids. It's time to leave this place. Yes, the tank has already hit twice. The tank? Yes, the first two times they shot at us from the tank, then the second time the hit was also from the tank and something was flown now. And they have direct view of the area, right? Yes. The distance is 1300 meters from here to that bank. The working range of the tank is 2000 meters or more straight. That's it, bunnies. Let's go. Let's go. Well, they are not shooting. We need to go to the car. Go quickly to the car. All the best. Goodbye. 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 Thank you. Take care of yourself. Good. Is there a chance that the army of the Republic of Belarus will also join Russian army and attack us? Russia is actively using the territory of Belarus, but taking into account the information I have thanks to our intelligence, I'm very skeptical about this. Once every three weeks a material appears, some facts, when someone refers to something, to some fake Western partners, as they usually write, we are told. But no one usually ever explains to whom and who tells us this. It's an information and psychological operation influence through mass media that there will be definitely an attack from Belarus tomorrow. Theoretically, they can attack. We monitor the movement of the armed forces of both Belarus and the Russian Federation, which take place on its territory. Here, my friends, you see, even in the forest, there is a such a modern command post. On the screen we see video cameras connected to the unified video surveillance system across the state border. The main goal is to prevent the subversive reconnaissance group of the enemy from entering the territory of Ukraine. 
We are not much afraid of an attack from Belarus today. We are working to ensure that Belarus is not involved in unification with the Russian Federation. It is very important for us. To be honest, I believe that we'll stand it and coerce them in this direction. Are those the very strategic positions near the Belarus border? Yes, here are the positions of one of the divisions of the state border service, which guards and defends a certain section of the state border with the Republic of Belarus. In the case of a threat, reserves are sent from here to provide assistance, engage and stop the enemy that is trying to trespass and invade the territory of Ukraine. Rochelle Sinader, Canadian production. Already this year, they were under artillery five several times. Really, everyone in the vehicle survived. We have more than a hundred of them. More than one hundred, yes. A very powerful drone. This one, for sure, can lift up to 15 kilograms. It is enough to destroy even a tank. We have drones that lift up to 40 kilograms. Not everything can be told, not everything can be heard, but we are working. Hidden machine. Are there many such places along the entire border? Of course. Good afternoon. I already see modern equipment here. It is no longer Soviet one. These are missiles for Javelin anti-tank missile systems, single-use anti-tank missile complexes of the Swedish production. And low, the anti-tank rocket-propelled grenade launcher is also of the Swedish production called Kar Gustav. Swedish-made 84 disposable anti-tank rocket-propelled grenades and American-made M72. I've never seen so much equipment in one place, in one bunker. It's impressive, to be honest. Not only for you. Do you know how it affects the enemies? To death! <laughs> to say whether they attacked or not, you can't be sure about it all, absolutely. Objectively, we are not observing a threatening situation now. As for now, this is absolutely unrealistic. This will not happen, and this is not planned. Today is February 4, and now a large column is moving towards the Russian border. There are two buses with Russian prisoners of war here in this column. They will return home. Our guys, our heroes, are on that other side of the Russian border. And today another exchange of prisoners is to take place. It is huge responsibility to understand that lives of hundreds of families, thousands of people depend on your decision. We're all really concentrated now. I directly take part at each change. My function is to coordinate all participants. What is important today, our country makes everything possible to return each of our heroes, of our guys. We are almost at the border. Pokrovka is Ukraine, Kolotilovka is Russia. Today is just one corridor, the center on prisoners of war exchange of the main directorate of intelligence, which has negotiations about prisoners of war. No other negotiations with Russia exist. You have to be careful here. We were told to take body armor with us, just in case. Everything can go wrong. There is definitely a kind of game that someone is not confirmed. Sometimes you're not sure that will happen until the last second. We're coming on foot, two of us. Copy that. Let's go. Who are you communicating now with, with those ones? Is it from that side? How risky is it? Well, you can see. I see by the body armor. That is, it's impossible to predict. It's unpredictable. There are no guarantees. In our slant, we call it going behind the front line. I pray that all ends well.
I feel anxious. It's never clear if they will return and if everything will be well. Here, Russian prisoners of war. The Russians definitely have categories of prisoners of war. Some of them are more valuable and significant, some of them less. The phrase itself suggests that the Russians have a people exchange rate. You can say so, but you don't know whether they have people exchange rate or not. We have a cult of human life. Today's exchange should have been made two days ago. One of the prisoners who was supposed to be exchanged wasn't brought in time. They knew my answer in advance. They don't even have to ask, no, we will wait, bring him. They're different philosophers. The second bus went to Russia, and this means that soon we're gonna see buses with our guys. Is this already Russia or not? This is a border. Don't get behind the flag. Here's Russia over there, because they shoot everything there. And look at us. And what about the snipers? The sniper are there as well. Can they? Everything is under control, of course. What are the snipers doing here? Provocations. Provocations? If everything goes well, we should have 116 Ukrainians returned from captivity. Well, this is a tense, anxious moment. You never know how things will go. Our struggle is still very tough, because it's impossible that in a 21st century, an organization which provides access to prisoners of war doesn't exist. Imagine what that people feel. After being held, they would be soon in their native land and see their loved ones. Well, it's definitely a feeling that you're a part of a very important, big event. And yes, it's really inspiring. Two bosses with Ukrainian soldiers are approaching, and that's it. They are already on the territory of Ukraine. They have passed the checkpoint where the flags are. Welcome home, guys. I can't even imagine what they feel right now. Our soldiers have arrived. Hello. Good afternoon. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to the heroes. The 12 months of captivity. Really, where did they take you? In Hostomel. Hostomel, it's awful. On the first day of the war. I take near Kiev, near Borodyanka. When? On March 20. Do the relatives already know? I don't know. They were informationally isolated. Absolutely. Your relatives do not even know if you're alive. Most likely they don't. Do you want to call? Yes, I do. Do you remember the number? Of course I do. Hello, Julia. Hello, it's me, Max, your husband. Max, have you been exchanged? Yes, I has exchanged. I just entered Ukraine. My kitty. Hello, how are you doing? Honey, I'm fine. Are you in Kiev? I'm at home, I'm in Kiev, and your parents are healthy and alive. Everything is all right. Are your parents alive? Is everything okay? Yes, everybody is okay. Everything is fine with them. Oh Lord, how happy I am. Yes, everything is okay. I love you so much. Oh God, I'm so happy. This is the happiest day of my life.
honey. I hear, I hear you, honey. Have you been exchanged, Kitty? Yes, I was exchanged, but for now, you can't tell anyone about it for a while. My God, I love you so much. I missed you so much. I missed you so much, honey. I love you, Kitty. Love you, love you, love you. Me too, me too, me too. <laughs> Don't cry. Everything is fine. I'm already in Ukraine. Love you, love you, love you. Me too. Kisses. Don't cry. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. When Russians put them into buses and drive throughout Russia, they don't know where. Maybe to death. Because there is no information. There's a vacuum there. They practically never tell our prisoners of war that they're going to home. It's finally over. People who are fighting, who fought for our country, who gave their health, should feel every moment that they were heroes. Glory to Ukraine! Glory to the heroes! some more, not the pills, who wants some more soup. <laughs> How old are you? Sorry for such a question. I'll be 63 soon. Are you enlisted or...? Yes, I volunteer. What was your motivation to join in the army even though you might not have to this after 60? I went to defend my motherland. My second motherland. My respect to you. Why second? Because I'm Belarusian. I'm Belarusian. Yes, I am. How long have you stayed in the captivity? Ten months. Ten months. What have you known during this time at all? Were you given any access to information? None. We were in a complete vacuum. No radio, no TV. There was nothing. Do you know that Kersen is already free? No, I don't. It has been liberated. My congratulations. I congratulate the people of Kersen. How would you say advancing? We will have them too. For certain. Exactly one year. What would you like to say to millions of Ukrainians in this day? I would like to thank them. Thank them that the armed forces of Ukraine are filled with these people, with Ukrainians. Ukrainians are different by ethnic origin, completely different by their character, but these people are united around our common goal. These are wonderful people who deserve respect. Such strong words. Ukrainians manage to unite and become strong and invincible. Even the Ukrainians with different points of view could unite. We all became the united living organism, and being like that, we are invincible. Moreover, I think if we could preserve this state, we shouldn't be afraid of anyone. Absolutely. I want to say thank you to all Ukrainians because we could fight for our land. The darkest times are in the past. You are special. I have a great honor to be the president of the Ukrainian people. Victory to all of us. Glory to Ukraine! 
glory to the heroes!